Hey there YouTube, it's Ines. I love everything AR and VR related and today I'm joined by my beautiful cat Tina. So under my last video someone asked me if I can explain how to animate the hands of a clock. <laughs> someone asked me how to animate the 3D hands of a watch according to the real time. And I thought it was a really interesting question and as I got more into it I thought it's a really good um, opportunity to get into some scripting. So this is the effect that I come up with and now I want to explain how I made it happen. <laughs> Let's go! For this prototype I made a very simple watch with a hand for the hour, a hand for the minutes and one for the seconds. I made sure that the pivot points are in the center and then I exported everything as an FBX. A quick import of the model into a brand new Spark AR project. And I'm just adjusting the position and the scale a little bit so it's nicely in the view. And since the materials from Blender do not get imported very well into Spark AR, I had to adjust the colors of my hands again and also increase the ambient light so everything is nicely lit. So far as I know there is no way to actually get the current time in the patch editor so we need some scripting here. Right click in the asset panel and choose a javascript, give it a name and then when you double click on it you can edit the script in a script editor of your choice, in my case it's Visual Studio Code. And here in green you can find some references if you want to learn more about scripting with Spark AR, you can look at that. I will just delete it for now because it's a bit overwhelming and we don't need it in this case. Also gonna delete this. And all of this. One thing we can keep that is useful is this diagnostics log. If we uncomment this and press save, you can see that the console pops up and we get the message that we just wanted to log out. So what do we actually want to do in the script? First, we want to get the current time in hours, minutes and seconds. Next, we want to calculate the angles of each hand based on the current time. To get the current time in JavaScript, we define a variable, current time, and we just write new date. So if we put this variable in our diagnostics log, we can see in the console that it gives us the current date and current time. So far so good. So let's be more specific and get the current hour. For this you write current time dot get hours. The same thing goes for minutes and seconds. If we log out the hours now for example we will get 14, which is correct, it's 10 past 2. So let's see how we can turn that into an angle. So this actually gives us an interesting problem, which is also known as the clock angle problem. You can look at it on Wikipedia and here we find all the answers that we need, the equation for the angle of the hour, and one equation for the angle of the minute. They also give us a little example how to use this. So now it's really easy for us to calculate it. It's 0 0.5 times and then in the brackets we have to write 60 times current hour plus current minute. For the minute angle it's even easier. 
We have to multiply six times the current minute because for each minute the hand needs to move six degrees. For the second hand it's the same thing, it just needs to update more frequently, like every second instead of every minute. So now we have to export these angles out of the script so we can use them in the patch editor. And for this we have to click on the script once and on the top right corner under from script we define a number variable, for example our angle. And I do the same for the minute angle and for the second angle. Open the patch editor under view and show patch editor. And now we can drag and drop the script into the patch editor. And you can see it has three output variables, our angle, minute angle and second angle. If we attach value nodes after them, we can see that these values or these angles are still zero. To make the script communicate with the patch editor, we require a patches module and we import it like this. And to export our values, we type patch dot inputs dot and then you can see it gives us some options like set boolean, point, pull, scalar. In our case, we want to set a number, so we use scalar. And then in the brackets, it wants a name for the variable and we just defined this in the editor here. So let's copy this. Paste it in the quotation marks. And then we also want to assign the value that we want to export on this variable. And that is the hour angle. I will just copy this also for the minute angle and the second angle. And now we can see in the patch editor that these values actually get exported and we can use them to make our patch logic. So we want to set the rotation. In this case, it's the Z rotation. So if I would type here the value I just get from this node, which is 427, it goes around half past nine, which is not correct because it's um, half past two. <laughs> but if I type a minus in front of it, then it actually is correct. And I'm not sure why this is the case. I think it's because of the way how I exported my model in Blender. So if you have this problem also, you can just negate the values that get exported here and it should be fine. Now, finally, let's connect the actual rotation of our hands with the value we exported and for this just click the little arrow next to the rotation transforms and after the value node we need a pack node to actually create a vector 3 that we can use here. Uh, in my model um, it looks correct if it's rotated minus 90 degrees on x so I will just keep this value then I connect it to the rotation node. A quick check on the time if this looks correct and it does. So far so good. Let's repeat this for the minute and the seconds also. So now our analog watch is showing the same time as our digital watch. So that's really good. The only thing that you might notice is that the second hand is not moving. And it only updates whenever I refresh the effect. And that is because in our script we call this function to grab the time only once, whenever the effect is initiated. So I want to pack this whole function and call it like every second. And to do this we need another module, in this case the time module. Now let's create our interval timer like this. Const interval timer is time dot 
set interval and then in the brackets we need a function that we want to call every few seconds i will just call this calc angles and we still have to actually make that function so it's not existing yet but i will do that in a second and as a second argument it needs the amount of milliseconds that it needs to wait until it calls the function again and of course i totally know how many milliseconds one second is so i just typed here 1000 milliseconds and next i create the calc angles function and this function is callable from our timer so let's just put everything from this function inside of our new function and now if we save and check the console it gives us a new log every second and as you can see in our preview the second hand is moving yay <laughs> let's compare it with the real time that looks perfect so we actually successfully programmed this little analog clock and that was it for this video thank you so much for watching and i hope it was helpful leave a like if you want subscribe ring the bell and you can also write down in the comments what i should do next i'm planning on making other tutorials maybe also for lens studio my favorite software and um, yeah you can follow me on instagram and on twitter and on snapchat and i see you in the next video bye